All right, everyone, so I have a new video. Uh, this is Griffith's Quantum Mechanics, problem 1.5. Before I continue, I just want to ask you to please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot. I will be posting more videos in the future. And if you'd like to suggest a problem, you can do so on Twitter, at PhysicsHelpMe. So problem 1.5 is given a wave function. We want to A, normalize psi, determine the expectation values x and x squared, and then find the standard deviation. Uh, sketch, I think they want us to sketch. Yeah, they want us to sketch psi squared and then find the probability that the particle is found outside the range. So the normalization condition, we've done that before. It's pretty straightforward. We just say one equals the integral from, and then uh, we say negative infinity to positive infinity of psi squared, so a squared e to the minus 2 lambda absolute value of x. And then, of course, we have e to the minus 2i omega t. And then we can use the fact that this is even to say that 1 is equal to a squared, 2 a squared, and I should actually because in general it could be complex. And then we can just integrate from zero to infinity since it is in fact an even function. And let me actually fix that because that's imaginary, so you can't do that. So e to the minus i omega t times e to the i omega t. Forgot that there was the i there. Of course, we're taking the complex conjugate. Uh, so because we're taking the complex conjugate, we change the sign, and then, of course, this is 1. I was about to say that looked a little weird, but okay. So we have this, and we still have our e to the minus 2 lambda. And at this point, we can drop, drop the absolute value sign because we're only integrating for x values 0 to infinity. So x is never going to be negative anyways, so no problem there. And this is just an easy integral to do, where you just let u equal minus 2 lambda x, du equals minus 2 lambda dx, or minus 1 over 2 lambda du equals dx. And then, of course, you can plug these in and evaluate it. And if you do that, what you'll find is that 1 equals a squared over lambda. So you're just plugging in. I'll take another step here. A is what we're solving for. And then we'll have e to the u, and then dx is times minus 1 over 2 lambda du. Of course, the 2s will drop. And then you'll evaluate... Um, this is obviously just going to be 1 equals a squared over, it's actually going to be negative, and let me do this in a different color, 1 equals negative squared over lambda e to the u, and we'll back substitute u as 2 uh, minus 2 lambda x evaluate from 0 to infinity. When you plug in infinity, well, that's going to be 0. e to the minus infinity is 0. So you then will just have equals 0 minus a negative, so that'll turn into plus a squared over lambda, and e to the 0 is just 1. So then a can easily be seen to be just the square root of lambda. Okay. So that's part A. Part B wants us to find the expectation of x and x squared, expectation value. And of course, this will just be psi of xt. We're going to take the complex conjugate, of course, so it's going to be no different. So this will be uh, I'm also going to do the trick with the integral, just changing the bounds to make it easier. 
And of course, now we have x, e to the minus 2 lambda x, and then dx. Okay. So, um, I'm actually going to rewrite this. This probably, this should still work either way, but I'm rewriting it like this. I, yes, it actually does have to be over even bounds because this integral is odd, right? That's x e to the minus 2 lambda x is an odd function. You could even try it out if you wanted. But since it's an odd function over that symmetric uh, interval, we actually know that this is going to be 0. So that's actually quite easy. Um, and again, we're doing the complex conjugate psi star psi. Okay, uh, oops, we actually also need to find the expectation of x squared, which I'm not going to belabor the point here. Uh, this time, I will go ahead and pull the 2 out again because I don't think it won't be because x squared is even. Uh, okay. So now we have x squared e to the minus 2 lambda x dx. And now we need to evaluate this integral. So you could either look this integral up. Um, I don't think you can do any sort of u sub. You could try maybe. Oops. Just dropped my pencil. I will just look this one up. But you could, you'd obviously have to let u be this. So minus 1 over 2 lambda u equals x. So x squared is 1 over 4 lambda squared u squared. That doesn't seem to really make the problem that much simpler because you're still going to have to integrate by parts. But okay, whatever. Uh, so the expectation value of x squared, either using an integral table, you could do it the way that I was suggesting and then integrate by parts. But long story short, the expectation value is 1 over 2 lambda squared. Okay? Um, yeah, if someone really wants to see that integral worked out, I can do that. But I'm trying not to get caught up in details that aren't super important. So next up, we need to find the standard deviation sigma. We've calculated this a few times. We can use our same equation we've been using and then, of course, we said that this part is just 0. So then uh, we want to take the square root of both sides here. Then we can see sigma is 1 over. And then what do we have? Uh, lambda root 2. OK. Cool. So that, what else do they want us to find? Find the standard deviation, sketch as a function of x, and mark the points x plus sigma, uh, expectation value of x plus sigma, expectation of x minus sigma. Okay. So, let's just draw a little graph here. So our expectation, this is going to be psi x we know our expectation value is going to be at x equals zero and if we look at our wave function what we have is um well i should say this is actually psi squared okay so essentially what we're doing is we're looking at if a is this here, I'll do it over here. A squared, which is just lambda. And then we have e to the minus 2 lambda uh, absolute value of x. Okay. So this is our wave function. So essentially what we have here is depending... Well, it's always going to be exponentially decaying so because of the absolute value sign. So we're going to get something like 
put a point here. It's going to decay. It's going to decay. So this is just what we know about exponentials. Uh, we also know at x equals 0, then this point here will just be lambda. So that's worth knowing. Um, and then there's some... It's not the best drawn graph. I wish it was a little more symmetric. But regardless, let's just say we'll do it in a different color with our standard deviation now. So this is going to be the expectation value of x minus our standard deviation. This is going to be the expectation of x plus our standard deviation. Okay? So they should be about, well, they should be exactly the same uh, width. Uh, do they want anything else? What is the probability that the particle would be found outside this range? Okay, so to find the probability that it's outside the range, we're going to follow, again, basically the same principle here. And we're really only integrating from 0 to infinity. Uh, we have our a squared here, e to the minus 2 lambda x dx. And this is more straightforward integral to do. If we do this, we have two lambda because again, this is equal to lambda. And then if you did a u substitution here, oh, minus one over two lambda du, and plug that in becomes just an e integral, so that's pretty straightforward. So we have two lambda e to the minus two lambda x over minus two lambda. We evaluate this from our standard deviation to infinity. Well, if we plug in infinity, that's just going to be zero, of course. Um, so then when we plug in our sigma, the negative sign will cancel so it's just going to be e to the minus 2 lambda sigma. Okay, so now we're left with a question of what is sigma? We have it as an expression, but we probably want to know uh, a numerical value of what sigma is. Okay. Well, we know sigma is 1 over... Actually, we don't. It'll cancel. Perfect because uh, lambda is a part of sigma. We found sigma to be this. So we could plug that in, and we're left with e. So obviously, you're going to have a um, minus root 2. The lambdas will cancel. And then we have our lambda out front. No, there's no lambda out front. It's literally just that. Perfect. Okay, so then if you plug this into a calculator, um, do that really fast. And I get 0 0.24. So there's a 24% chance that it'll be found either somewhere over here or somewhere over here. So there's a 12% chance here. There's a 12% chance here. And everything else is within our standard deviation. Okay? So I'm just going to re-emphasize really quick. To normalize, we just use our normalization condition. And we're taking the complex conjugate. So psi star psi. So our imaginary part will just be 1. And then pretty simple integral. Quick u sub, we can find a. Expectation value is how we've been calculating it. We took advantage of the fact that our integral was odd, so it made it quite easy. Um, 
We did the exact same thing with x squared. It was not odd, so that's a little trickier of an integral. Um, if I had to do it by hand, I would probably do a u sub followed by integration by parts. Maybe there's a better way of doing that, but that's what I would do. Once you get that, you can find your standard deviation. We made a really nice graph here. And then after that, we found the probability um, of where if you found the particle outside of your standard deviation. So hopefully that makes sense. And if it did, please leave a like and subscribe.